Isaiah. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, and that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice cries, cry out, and I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass, their consistency is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the gra people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Word of God, word of life. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of Christ. Loving God, may our reflections on Scripture this day inspire us to be strong followers of Jesus in both word and deed. Amen. Even in the midst of a global pandemic, there isn't much of a break from wars. Wars that force people to be exiled from their homeland. I know when the daily news about the pandemic has been given to us, these days often we will hear a bit of news about a major war that is happening in Ethiopia's Tigray region. Tens of thousands of people from the Tigray region have been forced from their homeland and are living in refugee camps. The UN forces can't get in soon. They say that food is going to run out. Unfortunately, this sort of situation has happened too often in the human world. 
2,500 years ago, the armies of King Nebuchadnezzar moved upon and attacked and took control of the city of Jerusalem. And he forced tens of thousands of Hebrew people to go into exile into Babylon, a place a thousand kilometers away from their homeland. Sound familiar? Some things in the human world just don't seem to change much. The Hebrew people, after living in exile for 40 years, well, finally, there was a change in the wind, and the Persian Empire took over, and the king of Persia felt that the Hebrew people, after 40 years, should be allowed to return to their home in Jerusalem. For these Hebrew people, it was a miracle. God had not forgotten them. Their suffering would soon be at an end. Soon they could go home after all these years. And Isaiah the prophet saw this coming, and he wrote, Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem, and cry to her that she has served her turn. And a voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Isaiah was preparing the people. He was getting them ready for how God was about to release them. Release them from their suffering after all these years. Now this song comes from a very particular time and place, from a very particular experience of being humbled and then being released from suffering. Even though this comes from a very particular time and place, these words of the prophet Isaiah became a powerful theme and a promise for the Hebrew people. Now, the Hebrew people would, in time, go through other, other times of being humbled and chastised. They would go through other times of suffering. And so they would turn to the words of the prophet Isaiah again and again. And they knew that this promise was real for them in their time, too. God would comfort them and eventually release them. But even more than that, Maybe one day, one day, the Lord would come and release them from captivity and suffering for all time. Today's reading from the beginning of the Gospel of Mark highlights the fact that John the Baptist saw something new happening. John was taking up the familiar song of the prophet Isaiah and yet he was crying out in a new way. Like Isaiah, he saw that the leaders of Jerusalem were being selfish and they weren't being good shepherds of the people. He knew that the people were suffering at the hands of the Romans, but John saw something new, something he hadn't seen before. He saw Jesus. He saw someone through whom God's Spirit was going to do something new, something which had never seen before. And if this was going to come to pass, the people needed to be ready. They needed to prepare. He writes, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have washed you with water, but he, he will wash you with the Holy Spirit. So what does it look like to be prepared? How do we know when our hearts are prepared to receive the awesome gift of God's love in our midst? Well, we need to start by looking at what John was saying and doing. I think it's important to note that John was not doing this in the midst of a big city. Where was he doing it? Out in the Judean countryside far away from the tangled web of authorities and administrations and imposing human structures. 
Was he washing people in a beautifully tiled, decorated pool? No. He was standing in the middle of a river about the same size as the Avon River. Was he collecting fees for this special event? No. The only thing he wanted people to bring was an honest and open heart. So what does it look like today for you and me to be prepared? Well, let's start by what it doesn't look like. If you are confident that you are already perfect and righteous, then you are not prepared. If you feel entitled to riches and good fortune, then you are not prepared. If you feel you are in any way better than others, then you are not prepared. If you expect God to come into the world as a powerful king to praise and honor your way of life, well, you're not prepared to receive this beautiful gift. But if you are humble and know that you need forgiveness, if you are penitent and change your actions to help others in tangible ways, and if you are thankful for whatever gifts and blessings you have in life, if you know that we are all the same in the eyes of God and that all belong, and if you anticipate God coming into the world as a vulnerable child who is willing to suffer, suffer a great deal of pain for your sake, well then, then your heart will be prepared to receive such an awesome gift. Amen. On the second Sunday of Advent, as we journey towards the stable, we stop to light the candle of peace bringing our praise and prayers to God the Father, saying, Gracious God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We acknowledge that we are on the ancestral land of the Anishinaabe, Adawandaran, and Haudenosaunee peoples, and the Dish with One Spoon and Huron Tract treaties. We pray that we may live in peace with each other and with all of your creation on Turtle Island. Gracious God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Giving thanks for our parish family of St. James, we pray for the people and clergy of this parish, asking for your blessing on those celebrating birthdays this week. Jane Slater, Jody Party, Heath Edwards, Sue Hughes, and Lois Webb. Gracious God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our Diocese of Huron and Todd, our Bishop, for Anne, Archbishop of Ontario, for Mark, National Indigenous Archbishop, for Linda, Primate of Canada, and for Marinez, Bishop of Amazonia. In our diocesan chain of prayer, we pray for St. George's Church London and the Right Reverend Terry Dance and the Reverend Dale Nicholl, for St. James Westminster and the Reverend Keith Nethery and the Reverend Canon Jerry Adam. For St. John the Evangelist London and the Reverend Lyndon Hutchison Hounsel and the Reverend Dr. John Thompson. In the Anglican Communion Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the Reformed Episcopal Church of Spain and for their Bishop, the Right Reverend Carlos Lopez Lozano. Gracious God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, our prayers continue for the residents and staff of Cedarcroft Place and their families. We pray that we may see the incidence of new COVID cases in our community and around the world begin to decline once again. We keep in our hearts our Indigenous sisters and brothers who continue to see COVID increasing in their communities and for the many who do not have access to clean water and adequate medical care. 
We pray for the patients, their families, and the staff of London's University Hospital, and for the safety of all the doctors and nurses working overtime caring, caring for COVID patients, and for all essential workers. We pray for the rice farmers in Nigeria, asking for peace for all who are suffering from violence of any kind around the world. We continue to pray for a peaceful and orderly transition of power in the United States, asking that all who have been elected lead with wisdom and justice, providing equity for all. Gracious God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Caring God, we pray for those who are suffering of body, mind, or spirit, for the lonely or grieving, anxious or depressed, for all who are living with mental illness or addiction of any kind, for those on the margins and for those forgotten members of our society. With winter upon us, we especially remember the homeless in our community and in all communities. We pray for those laboring under heavy burdens known to you alone. We ask that you draw them near, comforting them from their suffering so that they may know your peace and love. We pray for healing for Marlon, Marilyn, Jack, Angela, Rob, Peter, Nikki, Eileen, Judy, Marion, Abby, Maggie D, Jack, Scott, Harold, Ulrika, Ben, Debbie, Marilyn, Melissa, Lisa, Mary, Alexia, Tim, Judy and Aaron, and Charlie. Knowing that you know their needs, we pray for those in our hearts and for any that we may have forgotten. Gracious God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we commend into your hands all who have completed their earthly journey. Rest eternal grant to them, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Gracious God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Going forth, we pray that we may be instruments of your peace. Amen.